So, my musical education started at the age of four uh, with the violin actually through the Suzuki method. But it was sort of after three months or so where my teacher actually kicked me out of class for not actually paying attention. But my father, uh, he had some prior experience in playing the guitar. You know, he was self taught and he played a little bit. And uh, by that point, I was about five when he decided, okay, He's got, you know, we'll continue the Suzuki method, but on the guitar instead. And at that point, it was a great sort of, not just father and son, but certainly my mother as well. He, she was very much involved in the whole process, the whole family together. You know, it, we took it as a family bonding activity together and really enjoyed ourselves through music. And uh, since then, it's been an incredible experience. I played a lot together with my father, doing sort of community shows, with local charities and things like that. And uh, it really developed, uh, it really helped me develop the passion because I enjoyed it so much. So it was about nine or ten where I sort of said that, okay, wow, this is, this is really for me and I wanted to take things more seriously. So at that point when I was nine or ten, I started getting a lot more master classes from various artists that would come to Singapore. And uh, I was, I was, I, one of my huge mentors at the time was uh, Shudikao Perua. And uh, I would visit him from time to time in France during his summer camps and things like that. And, uh, and throughout all these performing opportunities and with, you know, studying all these masters, my mom and dad would help me uh, with what was a YouTube channel where not only was it just to share with people the joy about you know, that we experienced with the guitar, it was also another way to track our progress. And subsequently, um, we were very fortunate that this YouTube channel attracted the attention of the prestigious Yehudi Menuhin School in the United Kingdom, who then invited me over to the school for an audition. And subsequently, I've spent I've just graduated from the Menuhin School, having spent seven years in the Menuhin School studying music along with fellow international young and talented musicians. So for me, when I won the GFA, it was a huge, I had a huge sense of satisfaction because for me, it really gave me a huge reaffirmation of the work that I was doing. So at the time, I wasn't really sure about participating uh, at the GFA at the beginning because I, by that point I had only just spent two years at the Yehudi Menuhin School. I was re rediscovering what guitar technique for me was all about. And the school just did not actively encourage competitions as well. But after much discussion we decided that okay, I reached a point where I had you know, just the right repertoire that played to my strengths. But we waited so late that we actually applied until the, we didn't apply until the day of the deadline itself. So subsequently, from that point on, I was working on the repertoire and getting ready for the GFA, which was the first one at the time, which I did was the one in Charleston, South Carolina, in 2012, and that was a really, really incredible experience. My personal take on preparing for competitions in general would, would be that. Uh, in the ideal world, we would be preparing ourselves as musicians with different kinds of repertoire to the point that, you know, when a competition comes up, I can easily say that, okay, at this stage, what do I have to tackle the competition? And luckily with the GFA, I think that, you know, I had a pretty good set of repertoire that played to my strengths. So, ideally, I wouldn't necessarily say that one should prepare for a competition by thinking that okay there's a competition I want to do that and I'll practice that repertoire in fact I should think from I would I would say to think from the other way around see what you have and whether you're suit you're well suited to participate so that you know that okay I'm of a level that I can say okay I'm confident that I can do well in this competition and let's see how that goes and um, for my personal practice routine, I love to ensure that I'm always warmed up and always ready before I practice pieces so that I can practice in the most uh, prepared and most effective state. So I actually have given myself 
a warm-up routine that can easily go from half an hour to one and a half hour. A uh, huge combination of stretches of hands, arms, as well as a lot of finger work, uh, particularly stuff from Scott Tan's Pumping Nylon, uh, a couple of exercises that were recommended to me by Rene Scherzo, by Brudonis and Calabaro, and a lot of small sections from different pieces that I'm currently working on that sort of form my whole warm-up routine before I actually start going to working on pieces. So for me personally, I have a huge interest of what happens back here in uh, Southeast Asia and uh, I have to admit that since I've been spending a few years, the past few years in England, I've lost a bit of touch with the local scene back here. But I'm now that I'm back in Singapore for the next two years, I'm really looking forward to being able to get to know the local community better, not just in Singapore but in Southeast Asia. In terms of the local players in Indonesia, I have to admit that I'm not very familiar. But you know, having done this whole tour, getting to go to Malaysia, Thailand, the Philippines, and here, it's been wonderful to be able to meet so many people and to connect through the guitar and music. So I look forward to meeting a lot more people in the future. So my particular view about the classical guitar scene here is, uh, is that you know, having gone to Europe and ex having experienced all of the diverse uh, variety of players of huge strengths, sort of coming back here to see that actually we've gone very far, but in a way, we're looking at the bigger picture we're still at our infancy in terms of what music can really grow and develop into. It's very interesting because you can argue to the point that you know this is classical guitar is a representation of Western classical music, but I uh, I don't fully agree with that argument in the sense that you know whatever instrument or whatever medium we have to express ourselves, it's unique to us depending on where we are. So here in Southeast Asia, I like to believe that we have huge potential. I think in terms of the rudimentary techniques and things like that, you know, we still have a way to go before it's standardized. But then once we reach that stage, I think a lot of us have the musical qualities within us already and it's really taking that technique to the next step in order to express all these musical qualities. I think that's a very interesting question because you know as a classical guitarist sometimes you know the discussion of classical music comes up whereby what is classical music? Because classical music is such a vague term that classical music as a term itself is quite inaccurate because you can classical music, if you were to be to, to be specific, refers to sort of 18th or 17th, 18th century, you know, music from that period, and you can talk about more specifically music from the Baroque period, from the classical, Romantic, modern, etc., etc. For me, I'm a huge Romantic slash sort of modern fan in terms of you know playing on the classical instruments because romanticism expresses so many different kinds of colors and um, emotions and that's what we do when we perform we try to communicate these emotions that we feel and in terms of modern music what i find really interesting about that is that these are somewhat less conventional emotions that we're feeling and it's a great step for us to start for us to be exploring new areas that we have not ventured out before. So I think, for me, these two genres are really, really interesting. In terms of non-classical music, certainly jazz is the way to go for me because of its use of diverse harmonies that I suppose other non-classical genres don't necessarily explore in the same way, and that's something that I'm a huge fan of.
In my opinion, I've been very lucky to come through you know, the guitar, particularly in my circumstance because of the way I picked up the guitar with my dad. The fact that my dad and my mom, you know, were a huge factor in the guitar, making it a whole family bonding activity and things like that, that meant that I naturally got the support of my family in playing the guitar. And I enjoyed it so much that um, I don't necessarily feel like I've lost part of my childhood. I understand that, you know, it's very easy to think that way and I guess to a certain degree, yes, I, there could have been times where I could have been spending, you know, playing with friends or hanging out and things like that. But I think, you know, sort of looking back, I sort of realized that, you know, the joy of and, you know, enjoying making music as a result, you know, and going all over has, you know, caught the attention of other people and, and through making music I get to meet other people and make new friends along the way. So I think that, you know, the trade-off is still a very, very good one where you meet people from all over the world and, you know, discuss our passion and love for the guitar. I think the guitar, just like any other instrument, is, as I said earlier, is a medium to be able to express ourselves and our emotions through music. And for me, I think my personal direction as a classical guitarist is to be, is to provide audiences with a more knowledge and a more informed performance. Particularly here in Southeast Asia, I find that you know through what I've learned in England in the Menuhin School and throughout Europe, I've come to realize how much more there is to learn as well. And I've found that this is something that I would love to be able to take back here in Asia, Southeast Asia, and really build and thrive on that. This is something uh, that I would love to be a part of. I'm really excited to be part of this modern age of the guitar development because it's such a huge uh, cultural it's a huge cultural um, journey that uh, we all have to go through in becoming better human beings. And I would love to say that, you know, with the guitar, it's such a powerful tool that we can go out and move people, you know, not through words, but just through emotions, just through listening to music, we can really move people. And I would love to be able to use the instrument to help create a better community here in Southeast Asia.